welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the management pack for ServiceNow, uh, part of the, the VMware V Realize True Visibility Suite. Uh, we're going to start here in the documentation as this is a little bit of a different uh, management pack than some of the others. Uh, we're really, we're just uh, taking this data coming in from our uh, CMDB, our ServiceNow CMDB, and using our configuration items and mapping those uh, to uh, V Realize objects. So the first thing we want to take a look at uh, our system requirements. Uh, really, there there are uh, any supported versions, uh, Kingston Plus on the on ServiceNow side. Uh, so really, that's all we're looking for there. Uh, there are a couple of uh, other things we need to look at as far as a uh, user is concerned, as well as uh, creating a configuration file. Uh, so first thing, uh, getting our least privileged user. Uh, we do need to have uh, basically this role, uh, just an ITIL role. Uh, so ITIL uh, needs to be the role that's set uh, and that uh, we can start pulling data from that point. Uh, the other thing uh, is going to be looking into a configuration file. Um, this uh, part is uh, uh, kind of a little bit different from the other manager packs in the fact that uh, these configuration files do have to be created. Uh, since each, uh, each CMDB is a little bit different, it's going to have different resource types. Uh, so that something has to be created directly. So uh, this goes through this creating the configuration file in the documentation uh, goes through exactly how to do so. Um, we won't go all through uh, all of that today uh, as it could get uh, a little more uh, outside of the scope of what we're trying to do today, uh, but does go through uh, all of uh, what we need to do for uh, <coughs> different identifiers and different IDs here. What, we, what I do want to point out at the very top uh, is where this needs to live. Uh, so here is the directory or the path uh, that this needs to go in. And then we just need to know for the actual configuration in vRealize operations, we have to keep track of what that uh, what the, the configuration file is actually named. And so again, this is very important. Uh, you want to go through uh, this particular page as we look through and, and kind of uh, figure out how to make this uh, make this configuration file. Just for uh, reference, uh, I do have a configuration file that I use for our personal CMDB. Uh, this is, would be different uh, for someone else's, however, so it, it, it's not exactly a, a copy and paste kind of thing. Uh, but just to uh, uh, give a little context here, uh, I'll just kind of leave this up for a moment just so we can, uh, uh, if anyone wants to take it down or, or pause and, and look at that, uh, here's the top part and then uh, the bottom part as well. So we can always come back to this if you want to look at how uh, this file was created for our CMDB. Uh, however, it can be, uh, it will be a little bit different uh, when you actually go and use that in uh, uh, on your own CMDB. Last thing I want to point out is the using the manager pack section here uh, that we do go through. Uh, some of the dashboards are going to be in basically everyone's CMDB. Now there will be uh, some other dashboards created uh, once it's configured. Uh, but we'll we'll run into those uh, as far as what what is on our uh, CMDB and go from there uh, from that point. And also does have uh, the alert syncs uh, information uh, goes into metrics and statistics uh, here. And this is also going to be different depending on uh, what our config file looks like. So a little bit different there, uh, but we'll 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 kind of look through that as we go into uh, into VLS operations here. So jumping into VROPS real quick here, just to show off the configuration a little bit. Uh, I've already got this pulled up. This is uh, the way our, our uh, CMDB is configured here. Uh, we've got our host, our host name there, uh, and then just the what we've called that configuration file. Uh, in the documentation, it goes through where that needs to live in the work directory, uh, but this is what we've called it. It doesn't have to be standard.json. That's just what, uh, I, what I've called it on ours here. Uh, for the uh, credentials, uh, pretty easy. It's just a, a username and password. As long as it has that uh, ITIL role, I uh, will be fine there. Looking at the uh, advanced settings real quick, uh, we can uh, choose to upload dashboards. Now these are going to be uh, the dashboards that would uh, would come in depending on what uh, kind of CIs or what uh, classes we've input in our config, uh, configuration file and whether or not we wanted to upload those alerts or reports as well. Uh, we can also go into uh, the initial alert sync period. How much do we want to grab there? How far back do we want to grab for all of our alerts? And then uh, there are two options here for uh, concurrent requests. Uh, remember, this is a two-way street. Uh, this does communicate back and forth between the 
uh, CMDB, the ServiceNow CMDB, and VROPS, and vice versa. So if you clear an alert in one, it should clear the alert in the other. Uh, either way you, you go about that. Um, and then the, lastly, just uh, whether or not we're going to uh, verify or have any sort of SSL uh, configured there as well. So just jumping into our dashboards here, uh, of course, these are going to, again, be uh, somewhat different depending on what you bring over from uh, ServiceNow from the CMDB. Uh, the first one we're going to get is going to be st uh, statistics. Uh, and so we're going to uh, look through at uh, some of the resources, make sure that those are synced. going to let us know uh, all of that information there. Uh, we're going to uh, see our uh, states of our resources, our uh, property updates, uh, anything we're uh, creating or deleting. Uh, any incidents we've closed or reopened or, or any of your that have been suspended. Uh, and then uh, we'll go through on, on uh, collection uh, durations here at the bottom. So that'll be the same for everyone. Uh, that'll, that uh, statistics will always give you kind of uh, making sure that the manager pack is collecting the way it should be. Uh, from there, we're going to look then. We, we'll, we'll go down and uh, we'll see we, we've got... Uh, applications, business units, teams, departments, and that goes back to our uh, our back here to our config file where we're looking at uh, here are group types uh, and we're looking at uh, total applications, departments, teams, and business units. Again, we can see each of our uh, service now column uh, that we're, we're grabbing and then we're turning it into a VROPS group type and we're putting that uh, as, as the same application department team and business unit. So we're first going to go through all of the, the different uh, details, uh, the details dashboards. Uh, in this case, we're looking at applications, uh, so we can choose our application. And then notice as we do so, uh, the alerts and uh, the alert volume, all the virtual machines are going to change every time we do that. Uh, so that we're getting, uh, depending on the application we're looking at, we're going to get our different statistics as well as our child count. So we can look at our uh, number of virtual machines, the services we've got that are coming in, uh, kind of what is connected to it, whether it's a, a department or multiple departments, multiple business unit, multiple teams uh, that uh, might share ownership over this application, as well as uh, other pieces that we're bringing in with the other portions of the True Visibility Suite. So we can see, uh, you know, we've got a networking switch here. We can see our SQL Server database and instance. Uh, we see our ports, our data store. Uh, looks like some queries have to do with this application. Uh, we have one SQL job there. Uh, it, it looks like it is on uh, NetApp storage or utilizing NetApp storage or some some cases uh, pure uh, storage here as well. So we're looking at the application. It's going to be the same as if we switch to department, only now we're going to see the departments here. And as we switch through our various departments, we'll, we'll go back and forth and we'll see the same information we were looking at before. Uh, all, all of our children counts are going to be uh, the, very similar, uh, depending on what uh, department we're, we're on there. Uh, and then the alerts will switch again as we change our departments. If we go to uh, team details, same thing, we just have our various teams. If we look at, at my team here, uh, we can see, uh, again, all the virtual machines, the, ch the child count, the uh, alert volume, uh, everything there, and same thing with, with the business unit. So it, uh, it, it just goes uh, through which of these are similar, depending on what we put through our config file. Uh, these are going to bring in those groups that we're bringing in. Now, if we wanted to look instead by uh, and get the cost analysis rather than the details in each of these, uh, we can do that too. If we want to want to pull out uh, our, uh, it's by application cost, but by virtual machine. Uh, so now we're going to get uh, all of our costing information over here. Uh, so whatever we're we're looking at as far as our our total and our average for the month, uh, our direct costs, we're going to get all that information as we uh, change everything through. Where then we're going through and collecting. Uh, information on the virtual machines, the hosts, and the data stores. Uh, here, connecting with uh, this particular, uh, in this case, uh, application. Uh, we can do application cost by virtual machine or application cost by data store. So it'll, it'll do either way we look at it. Uh, and the same thing then if we move through uh, by department, we're going to get our department cost by virtual machine, uh, or we can get our, uh, our cost by data store as well. Uh, again, with team uh, team cost by virtual machine or team cost by data store, and then business cost by uh, virtual machine 
uh, or data store. So a lot of different options you can uh, you can choose to uh, to do this with. Uh, you can also uh, start to make custom dashboards that when we look through are going to be uh, things like uh, cost per versus performance. So we can see uh, what that looks like. A couple other, uh, quite a few other dashboards we could get into as well. So once we've added multiple manager packs into our cluster, we can move from a view like this, looking at our VM, data store, and host, to something more like this. We can see that the same virtual machine is still the focal point, but off of the data store we can now see the three-part virtual volume and the common provisioning group it's a part of. We can see the SQL Server instance, we see the databases within that instance, all of the queries, the SQL jobs, and the wait types. We can also see the Cisco Nexus switch, uh, as well as the ports that are on that switch. We can take a look at our F5 Big IP load balancer. We can look at our IIS web server, application pools, websites, applications, and virtual directories. On the left side of our virtual machine, we can see not only the host, but the Cisco UCS blade, the fabric interconnects, and even the chassis itself. Once we have dashboards that can help us with the relationships within our stack, we can start to build out some custom dashboards that can help out with troubleshooting or allow us to be more proactive in our approach. We can correlate our data and use this information to visualize the stack, from applications down through the compute layer, the networking layer, and down into the physical storage we're utilizing. 